Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, Thundercats 2011, and my episode to adventure suggestion. Alright, so basically, uh, this is kind of an unusual video. So, uh, this is how to take an episode from a specific show, which is Thundercats 2011, and uh, look at one specific episode and lift the elements out of that specific episode and do a Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure based on that episode, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, to, uh, Thundercats 2011. So I'm a big, big fan of Thundercats and um, the original show. And then they relaunched it, uh, Thundercats 2011. They relaunched Thundercats in 2011. It got two seasons, uh, but it not it did really did not do commercially well. It was uh, somewhat of a, it was a commercial failure. Uh, it was stopped, They stopped making it after two seasons. Not many people watched it. The toys stayed on the shelves and really didn't fly off. The, you know, they, the toys did not fly off the shelves. And it was quite sad. I, I was really disappointed to see what happened with this show. I love this show. I, I actually think Thundercats 2011 is, bu is much better than 1980s Thundercat. 1980 Thundercat. It's really amazing. It's extremely well written. And uh, it's just fantastic. It's, it's got beautiful drawings, and it contains all the cool stuff from the original Thundercats. Lino, Chitara, um, Tigra, uh, Panthro, Mumra. It's it's all there, man. You know, uh, uh, the Robert Burbles, um, the, the Thunder Tank, everything cool from Thundercats is in 2011 with much, much better writing and much better art. So I'm a huge fan of Thundercats 2011, but I wanted to tell you about uh, oh, so I do want to talk, so let's say you get excited about Thundercats 2011, which I have definitely got excited about uh, Thundercats 2011, but there's been a problem. This show, to my knowledge, has not streamed uh, anywhere, uh, ever, right? So it was on television back in 2011 and 2012 when it, when it came out, um, and if you were fortunate to watch it then, which I did, I really enjoyed it, but since then, it's not streamed on any service. Which, uh, you know, and so that was been really a problem. I don't really buy episodes as one-offs or buy seasons. It's just not something I do. Um, so just want to let you know that. Uh, but right now, um, Thunder, the reason why I'm talking about it today is Thundercats uh, 2011. I am a big anime fan, and um, we have Crunchyroll, but Verve is connected to Crunchyroll. Um, but you actually have to get uh, Verve Premium to watch Thundercats 2011. So if you really wanted to watch it, and you have a lot of resources, you could just get Verve Premium, which costs $9.99 a month, and then you can watch the show, right? Um, so it's not, it's still not easy to watch, but I did that. I, I pulled the trigger and I signed up for Verve Premium at $10 a month just to watch the show, and uh, and it's it's totally worth it. I, I absolutely love this show. I'm a huge, huge fan. So um, the, the fourth episode of Thundercast 2011, is an episode called The Song of the Pedalars. And this is a perfect episode to adventure, all right? So let me explain what happens in The Song of the Pedalars. So Lionel and his crew, which is uh, Wily Kit and Wily Cat, Snarf, uh, Chitara, and Tigra. That's who's with them at the time. Uh, they all come across this group of uh, people called the Pedalars. The Pedalars are grown, they, they, they are born and they're only about six inches large when they're born, and then they grow to about two feet tall, and they're made completely of plant-based plant, plant life. So it's like a bunch of flowers came to life. So the Petalars are, are sentient human, they're, they're like sentient beings, they look just like humans, if humans were completely made of flowers, right? They only exist in this one forest, and Lion-O and, uh, and his crew come across them, and they sing. Right, and uh, and they come across. Uh, so the pedalars meet Lino and his crew, and um, Lino, you know, befriends them. Right. Well, they're not magical in any way, and they don't really have any commerce. Right. They just kind of go through the forest. The forest really supplies what they need. They they live very symbiotically with the forest. They need very little. Right. They don't even really hunt or anything like that. They're just living flowers. Right. And so Lionel, um, just just staying around with them for just a little while, they start. He starts to learn about their history. Well, they have this history that is written on a single simple leaf that they keep rolled up, and it's part of their um, their heritage. And they they tell Lionel that they have not, um, they were not originally from this forest. They were from a forest many many areas away, 
And that one day they were they were in this one grove, and a storm swept them away and brought them here. And to this day, they all uh, they all have this prophecy that they can return to this cliff face, and a new uh, beneficial wind will carry them back to uh, to their original home, right? And so Lino is talking about this with this one young young petalar who's growing. And soon, Lionel and everybody else realizes that the petalars live their entire life in a single day. And then we realize they realize this is like, um, I think his name was Meta, Metafinx. And so Metafinx actually comes comes to, to Lionel, and he talks at him, and he goes away. He talks to him, and then he goes away for two hours. And when he comes back, it's like he's aged twenty years. So. Every single member of the Petalars only live a single day, right? Well, Lionel, uh, you know, learns about their history and then aids them and takes them to the cliff in time to to catch this beneficial wind, and the entire group are swept back to their uh, to their original home, right? And there's actually even more adventure than that, right? Um, and it's a, it's even a little more complicated of a story than that, but but it. But it really touched me. One of the things that was really cool was Lion-O actually in a single day sees this young petalar born, trains him how to use a sword, talks to him in his midlife about being a warrior and what honor is, and then actually sees this young petalar die as an old man, right, in a single day. And I was just blown away. It was beautiful. It was an absolutely beautiful story. And I was really touched by it. And I thought, episode to adventure. You could absolutely do this in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So here's how you would do this in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. What you would do is you would simply um, uh, rename the Petalar as the Sylve, right? And uh, keep them the same in every single way. Um, rename uh, Metafinx, uh, I would I would call him um, Alphagar, right? So, and then have one of the, and then have your adventurers encounter these creatures, right? Now the reality is, you're, you're, there's a good chance your player characters may completely move past them, and the reason why is they don't really hold any benefits for the player characters. They don't really have any riches, um, and they're so they're they're only two feet tall and they're made of flowers, right? Uh, the one uh, Metafix, the one Petalar in the story, he had a sword that was made out of a twig, right? Like they they offer nothing to the player characters except friendship. That's it. That's all there is, right? And so, uh, you know, that's really all they... And, and they don't really offer any threat, right? So, basically, the only way your player characters are really going to interact with them is if they stay and they... Um, maybe they just spend some time with them and they talk with them, right? Um, and then if they do that, they'll find out the same the same story. That, you know, that the Sylve came from a different valley. They were blown here by a storm. And if they follow the, the map on this leaf... They'll be able to return to uh, their original valley, but the tribe has decided not to do that because there's all kinds of predators, mostly birds, who pick them apart when they travel, right? And so the, the player characters can simply escort them along for a journey that is literally like five miles. But for that, but for these little creatures, it's a big deal, right? You know, so uh, because there's so many dangers in the forest, and it, and it's an area they have they don't really go, right? So the player characters can just move along, and then you can do this reveal, where one of the char- one of the uh, Sylve go away for uh, two hours and come back, and they're twenty years older, and they realize that that every single one of the Sylve only live a single day, right? Now um, this is you know so this is purely narrative. There's really no benefit to the player characters, and if they assist them, they won't even get any treasure, right? This is purely just. Um, a noble act that the player characters can do, and it was really beautiful when it was presented in um, uh, in Thundercats 2011. It's in episode, it's in season one, episode four. It's called the Song of the Petalars, and uh, and you could even just read a recap for it, and you'd be ready to go to to uh, to actually run uh, this for one of your for one of your player characters. Um, and then if they like it, you can actually add to the lore of the Sylve. I would not actually add to the lore of the Sylve until they've actually encountered them and they've actually done anything with them. I'm a really, really strong believer in not railroading people. So give your player characters every opportunity to just walk away from this and not interact with them in any way. Right? You know, like, 
that that should absolutely be an option. You don't want to railroad them into having to interact with these creatures. But if they do interact with these creatures, essentially all they're going to get is friendship and a good story. And and I think it was really cool. And uh, but I highly recommend uh, Thundercats 2011. Um, I think it's worth the uh, subscribing to Verve for. But that's just me. I'm a huge Thundercats fan. By the way, I think one of the reasons why Thundercats has been so difficult to watch is I'm pretty sure the company that owns them thinks that they're going to make a movie out of it, which I I hold faith in that. I really think you can hold... You could have a huge Thundercats movie and just learn all the lessons from Thund from Transformers and do it better. I think it would be awesome to have a Thundercats film, and I'm very much down for whenever anybody's ready to do that. But consider doing this episode to adventure from the Petalars to the Sylph. Take care.